Hi, I'm Kurt Fry. In this movie, I'm going to show you how to calculate the expected number of steps that it will take to move through a process that has been defined using a Markov chain. The sample file that I will use is Markov Movie 03, and you can find a link to it in the video description below. At the top left, I have a transition matrix, which is by convention known as Q. The idea is that a product, in this case a shipment, needs to go through a number of steps of review, not all of them, but at least one, before it is approved for export outside of the United States. We start at step zero, which is when a package is outside and it's ready to start review. And from step zero, you can go to step one half the time, 0.5, step two, one fifth of the time, or 0.2, and the other values there. Once you move to step one, then you have a 30% chance of staying at step one, 30% moving to step two, 30% moving to step three, and the rest you see there. The last row, step five, has probabilities of going back to step two, which is 1%. Step three, also 1%. Step four, 3%. And the probability of staying in step five, which is legal review for another step, is 70% or 0.7. And again, these probabilities in the bottom rows do not add up to one. And that's because some of the packages or shipments will have been approved. And those are outside of the process. Below that, I have the identity matrix, which is called I. The identity matrix is the matrix that will give you the original matrix back if you multiply it. So you can see that on the main diagonal, starting from the top left to the bottom right, we have all ones. And even though my rows and columns aren't the same width and height, this is in fact a square matrix. I have six rows and six columns. So from top left to bottom right, they are all ones and all other values are zero. And if I multiply this identity matrix, by the matrix Q, then I will get Q back. Over on the right, I have two other steps. And the first step in this calculation is I minus Q. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we are subtracting the Q or transition matrix from the identity matrix. And then we'll perform an operation on the result. Let's see what that looks like. I'll click in cell K9, type equal, and I want to subtract the elements of the Q matrix from the corresponding element in the I matrix. So I've got two matrices that I need to work with. I'll define the first one in parentheses. So I have the identity matrix, and that is C21 to H26, then a right parentheses, minus, then left parentheses, and Q, which is C9 to H14 then type a right parentheses to end and enter. And there's the result. I have performed element-wise subtraction. So for the identity matrix top left, we have one minus zero, which gives us one. And then going through the top row in the second column, we have zero minus 0.5 is minus 0 0.5. And the rest of the calculations are the same. So that is how we do the first part. However, we need to do one more step, and that is this thing here, which is the quantity I minus Q to the negative one. In matrix mathematics, minus one indicates an inversion, or the inverse of a matrix. I'm going to switch now to the inverse example worksheet to show you what that means. I have a small matrix here on the left, so four, three, three, two. And the idea is I want to find the inverse of it, and an inverse is the matrix that if I multiplied it by this matrix, then I would get the identity matrix back. To perform that calculation in Excel, I'll click cell G3, equal, and then the function we'll use is MINverse, so minverse, or matrix inverse. And the array is C3 to D4. Right parentheses and enter and I get minus two, three, three, and minus four. So when I multiply the first matrix by its inverse, I should get the identity matrix with a one top left, one bottom right, and the other two values being zero. 
So I'll click in cell E6, equal. Matrix multiplication, MMULT is the function. And the first array, C3, D4, then comma, then G3. And it's a spill, that's what the hashtag means, because it's the result of a calculation that's spilled. And enter, and I get the identity matrix back, as I described it earlier. One thing to point out is that not every matrix has an inverse. So if I go back to the ship rev worksheet, it is possible that the quantity I minus Q, this matrix here, does not have an inverse. And if that's the case, then you will need to change, even if only slightly, values in the transition matrix. It might be going up by 0 0.01, down by 0 0.01, whatever, just so long as you get an invertible matrix. So to find the inverse of I minus Q, which I have stored here, I'll go to cell K21 equals, then minverse, and the array is K9, and the spill of the result, so it's K9 through P14, then right parentheses to close out the formula and enter, and there's the result. We can use this information to calculate the total number of steps by adding up the first row. So I'll click in cell Q21, press Alt equal to create an auto sum formula and enter. And it looks like it will take on average 6.32, call it 6.3 steps to move through this process. If, like me, you love popular mathematics, you might subscribe to the Number File channel. And Professor Marcus Dusatoy has a terrific video on Number File where he analyzes the game of Snakes and Ladders, which is called Shoots and Ladders in the US. I have a link to that video in the description below. And in that video, he gives you a couple of different examples and shows you how to perform different calculations using a Markov chain. Thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel.